Because we are so old school, I still love to have dynamics in our music. I, I don't make it for to be listened to in in a very uh, noisy cars or something. I, I make it for those same kind of freaks as I am, that they sit down and they take a glass of wine and they really listen what comes there. So then there can be uh, strong parts and, and the low parts. And th that that's how I, I want to do it. I, I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but uh, that's what we be, what what we have been trying to do for for these years. Yeah, and that's very really strategy, right? When you they follow a good strategy going forward, you need to differentiate yourself, right? You don't want to be yes. one of many, man, right? So you are different yeah. because the drawing, uh, not uh, YouTube that much, uh, you know, not streaming that much, a little bit a teaser. Where people got to know, but that's what you differentiate yourself. And eventually, you and your family end up uh, where they created the uh, secrets uh, oil label, right? And uh, with for samurai album, that's your solo project. Feel free to elaborate of the goal of that particular record label. How difficult it was uh, when you're on your own. You take a lot of risks, right? You don't know what in a month from now you you you, you release. I don't know, five hundred CDs or five hundred vinyl for this remaster. You may never record the money. You know, you need to convince your wife and your family to put money to it. Uh, but in your case, it went, it worked out well and, and people all over the world buy the music, you know? So, uh, so yes, uh, I'm just confirming you want to know about Secret or the, the label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm happy, happy to do that. Uh, be, before, uh, just uh, one mention about the LPs. We have been asked many times if we that we should release LPs and of course we would like to but the biggest problem is that they should be under 40 minutes and we have never ever released an That's album right. under 40 minutes um, yeah. Lady and the Lion is about 41, 42 so that's the closest one but we, we are still thinking about it but we should make a special album because mm -hmm. all the others are 50, 60, even 70 I think Secrets of Disguise was something like 77 minutes, and that was too much, the, uh, one of those CDs there. But we, we will see, because it would really uh, give the, uh, the glory to Ed Unitsky's fantastic artwork to have a gatefold LB or opened up. And, uh, but the, the, that's the main, main reason. Of course, the, the costs are very high, and, and that, that duration, that I just check that it should be under 40 minutes, and that, that is a problem for us. We, we cannot just take uh, any normal release of ours and, <clears throat> and release it as LP. It would not sound good. Uh, for uh, To talk about Seacrest, I have to go back to 1986. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm known to be a little too... to, to have too many words, but uh, there is no way. Uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I told that I, I met some fantastic musicians uh, in, in my high school. And uh, in 86, there was a, a big nationwide competition in Finland called Star Chase. And the main, uh, the, the first prize was a record contract. And uh, uh, the, the singer, Kirsi Vainiomäki, uh, that she is the one that I met in the high school, and she was and she is a fantastic singer. She she had a voice like Annie Haslam. So already in the high school, we performed Renaissance songs. I mean the wow. group, yeah. and she sounded unbe unbelievably good. So uh, it took some years, but then I put a, a, put up a band called Minea with with my friends from here and there and we we participated in that competition and to be honest uh, only because of the Kirsi's voice we won the whole competition so uh, it was because we I think we yes we did even some acoustic things to give glory to her voice too <clears throat> And and so it, and we succeeded. So we got a re the the first part was a recording deal, but then the pro problem started. Uh, uh, 
you know, in the 86, the record deal was still a big thing for the major company. Yep. Now, anybody like, like me, we can have an indie label and release ourselves and some can release in Bandcamp and Spotify. But at that time, it was a big thing. So I was very happy. But then nothing happened. Uh, for the next half years, I went to the uh, to see the record label manager to ask what's happening. Yes, yes, it's it's going. Yeah, 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 and and nothing, nothing happened. But after six or seven months, we went to to record a couple songs in in about the best studio in Finland. We spent a weekend there. And and it it became clear that the the record label was interesting in the of the singer, not for the band, but but the musicians were good enough. That was not the problem. And luckily for us, the husband of the singer was in the band also. So the singer says that the, the band stays, <laughs> and right. that's it. Yeah. So they accepted that that, and we made uh, uh, that single, and it was okay. We even. They got us into Finnish television to participate in one competition, but after that, nothing happened. the The record never came out. Uh, 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 I started. Uh, of course, I tried to ask what's going on, and nothing really happened. So, uh, after some time, the record label went into bankruptcy. So, oh. and 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 the the amazing thing is that as a lawyer i was working in teosto which is like a finnish ascap or bmi like a big copyright organization and i met the the lawyer who uh, was taking care of the in finland we say konkurssi pesa it's the like the company who is in the bankruptcy bankrupt so they cannot control it anymore the lawyer is in charge i said that please I want to buy the master tapes of our recordings uh, because they have never been released. Can can I just buy them so we can s see what to do if we can do anything with them? So he accepted and they went through and they never found them. They they had lost the, the master tapes and it cost them a lot of money to make those. So I, I don't understand that kind of music business. So. I never found them. We only have one C cassette of those recordings. Uh, so uh, that that was it. And also, when we formed Miss Season in two thousand four, uh, we had a contact from one uh, Ita Italian label who wanted to release our album. We said fine. He said, "Send us uh, masters. Send us artwork. Send us everything." We said, "Sure," but. Uh, should we make some kind of contract, some kind of a deal, how it is going to be? And after that, we heard nothing from him. So I decided that that is enough. Let's let's take a risk and let's do it ourselves. I'm sorry, that's a long story, but that's the history of Secret Story that I, I found out it's at least you can do whatever kind of music you want. And of course, it's nice if the albums sell, but I guess it was because of my love to this kind of music that i i wanted to be without pressure to to do something to please myself and to please the the groups and hopefully to please the audience and that's that's why my mysticism was completely our own baby no nobody else uh, uh, had any control of the albums and and that's how it started and of course it has especially the first years where uh, difficult. I had to finance it myself, but I was still that time working as a as a lawyer steadily. So it, it was okay, and and uh, especially after the Samurai of Prague, uh, the it has been selling uh, just fine. Of course, not not huge amounts, but but I, I feel very fortunate that we can sell still even CDs that much as that that we can have money for the forthcoming albums so that's uh, as long as i i don't uh, uh, as long as i i understand that i i will never become rich so uh, 
out of that. So the, the idea is that if if there are some profits, they go to the production of the new new CDs or maybe some equipments. But but it, it's not a <laughs> you cannot make a living if you release like that. Then we should really be more active and and tour around the world and and so. How many how many CDs are are how how many different CDs? Are listed on the on the website. You they are they are your music and collaboration you have done, and from other people as well, Marco and and so so forth, or just your own stuff. I I need to look at the the, the website to look at the the different what you have. Yeah, there, right? it, it might be a little outdated. Sorry, I I have to check that. But I think Secret has released about forty four or so, and and uh, three three of those. Uh, are those four CD boxes? Two, of, two of them are uh, uh, omnibus boxes from the Samurai of Prague, and and then one is by Jan Olof Strandberg that just came out a few months ago. Because uh, I noticed some of the deluxe boxes, they are like limited. I don't know. Maybe you end up creating two hundred, and then you sold two hundred, and you need to figure out. Well, make does it make sense to do another two hundred? Or we just continue, or we uh, create like a master deluxe box, right? For people that want to buy you, basically, how they can go over it. There, it's not that easy to find. You know, I have a lot of music, and I still, you know, some of the the music. No, there are copies here and there, eBay, Amazon, here, here, but no. Yes, you know, Th that's too bad. I I would like to, and of course, we are always checking if we can and make re-releases and that's one reason why we made omnibus that yeah. boxes so the first omnibus includes the four first uh three albums as, yeah. as one is double and and the next one includes the the follow uh, following four albums and and especially for the first omnibus i remixed uh, almost all of the songs and remastered so i i was more happy about the sound and we also even played many many things again and did some extensions and we just couldn't help ourselves but we we were happy with the result and and uh, marco invited steve babb from glass hammer to play one bass solo and s just so those small uh, small uh, things for the for the fans and because there was quite a lot of complaint because people couldn't find the first first album so that's why they released the omnibus boxes and then eventually the the next albums were sold out so we we made omnibus number through and that now uh, we are planning on releasing omnibus three with it will probably include the the grim grim brothers uh, albums lady and the lion and and the white snake and then uh, maybe the Spaghetti Western and, and Anthem for the Phoenix Star. Three of those were sold out very quickly. That's always the the big problem. Of course, it would be nice to print many thousands if you know that they, they will be sold. But some, mm. some years ago, our apartment was full of CDs. Uh, of course, I have my own collection, but then all the secrets, secret CDs were there too also and there were a lot of unsold cds so uh, i i had to be more careful how many to print so we discussed with marco even marco is not a part of the secrets he is just very closely involved secrets is just my, my family owned small business but uh, we we decided that uh, we talked with marco and we decided that it's it's safer to to release uh, a a rather limited quantity to be, and to sell them out rather than to 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 print a lot more and then have another 500 or 1000 CDs more in my closet so i i did that to make my wife happy and and uh, in a couple of years all the old CDs sold out so my wife was very happy that sick <laughs> the collection of CDs uh, secret CDs was much smaller that's the horrific story behind the, <laughs> the quantities yeah. of that print. <laughs> Absolutely. 
How how you able? I know you in your albums and your career, you have worked with people all over the world, right? And literally all over the world, right? Yes. Uh, how how you manage? How how difficult it is to find? Well, this guy is very good from Chile or from Argentina, or from Tokyo, or from Milan, Italy, and so on. So and how how how, how you manage that? Because how you are able to identify great musicians of the world that can. Man, this guy can work great for this, but not that great for that one. But for that one, we need another guy who is best in what he does. He's from Spain. This guy from this project, guy from Chile, and this guy from another guy is from Hungary. How? Because in your head, you need to uh, one find people, two that are available, three that they need to like the music what you want, and how you work over the internet because you're you don't travel there, right? So, they, I suppose they need to. You send a couple of tracks. What do you think about that? All right. Yeah, I like the music. I will play my drums. I will play my guitar. Send you the file back and you go back and forth. Uh, it's time consuming. And eventually you say, man, I really like this. Time. Okay, we'll release it. We'll remaster it and so on. So, so what, what's the process of selecting people and finding the best candidates, so to speak, for musicians over the world? That's an excellent question. It, it can be very, very tough and difficult, but it can also, of course, it can also be very rewarding and, and interesting to work with uh, different musicians around the world and, and top musicians. I, again, I feel very fortunate and humble to, to, to be able to work with those top, top class musicians. But, and you also, if you let me, I, I must also add the composers. Because the whole process starts with the composers. Of course, almost all of them are musicians as well. So Perfect. quite often the process starts that Marco, he's an endless idea bank. Uh, um, when we started to, working, uh, started to work in 2009, I think we have developed a quite uh, stable division of labor, how you say, a way how we work. Uh, yeah. As you know, we have made also these Bernard and Bursty albums when Steve has been busy with other projects that are very close to the Samurai of Prog albums. So basically, Marco is the one who comes up with the ideas and he proposes them to me. I say, these, I don't, oh, this is good. Yeah, let's go for that. Then he, uh, quite often he suggests uh, composers to me what do you think if we invite this and this and this they might be good for this kind of music and so he gives them the concept the idea usually we give the composers absolutely three hands we can give some guidelines but but we uh, they usually have a lot of freedom to compose what, whatever they want but as long as it fits into that concept and, and what happens next is that they usually send us a demo and, and uh, we may have some suggestions, but uh, that let's arrange this part again. And uh, we may have some wishes, but very often those songs are so excellent that we say that, okay, that's it. So what happens is that the, the composer sends us uh, the bass tracks. He has, they are, Almost 100% they are keyboard players. So he sends us the fi almost the final keyboards and the, the demo instruments. So then we can hear the, the whole song and imagine what we need. Sometimes we need more, sometimes we need uh, less. So that, that's the very good question. Then we just have to use our imagination that who would be the, the correct guitar player for this kind of solo. And uh, quite often it works well, but of course we are not Steely Dan. Those guys could spend zillions of dollars to invite the best musicians in the world to the studio. Uh, like I just heard the solo, was it by Rob and Ford or Larry Carlton, who, or who were, that was deleted because Jay Graydon did a better one. So we, we cannot, those are our friends, and this, this works in the friendship basis. So we cannot do that, that somebody works for us for two weeks, and then we said that we don't like that. 
uh, uh, we don't accept you. That that's out of the question. So what we we can do is that if you have some wishes, we we may ask that could you change the style a little bit or the sound or could you add add a little bit or or something like that. Of course, we have to have the final word with the production. If we accepted everything that the musicians sent us, those records would be quite full of <laughs> instruments and stuff so nobody could listen it sometimes i have to i'm the one who does the final final edit so sometimes i i, I hate myself but that sometimes i just have to take something off because there is all already too much and i think the musicians understand that but but in, in general, uh, as I said, it's very diffi but difficult, but in general, as we have a wide uh, range of, uh, and, and those are really our friends, it's mostly, uh, mostly they are people that we already know. So in general, it works quite nicely. And every now and then we find somebody new, or even in somebody new contacts us, uh, that he would like to work with us. And of course, that's a big, big honor. So... Uh, I find it as a very big uh, blessing that that we can work this way. Of course, the the challenge is that to have the coherent album that it it's, doesn't sound like everything is uh, different. But uh, as long as the the bass player and the drummer play with their own st style and 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 sound. It helps, and and, and yeah. as long as I, the, the mixing guy is the mixing engineer is the same, and so so I I, I hope they are still coherent enough. But I, I found it more like a blessing than if we would have only one composer and always the same musicians. Uh, it's there is a bigger risk that the albums would sound too much uh, the same. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Um, you end up releasing a, a very special album called La Tierra, uh, Mike, you know, the, with yourself and, and Marco, that he sang entirely in Spanish and with a collaboration of very good Chilean artists, feel free to elaborate uh, in that particular album. Um, like I told you, I'm from Chile, so every time I see Chilean artists, you know, I want to I wanna mention and help, want to help out a little bit, you know. Yes, I, I, I love uh, Jaime Rosas' work. Uh, is it Jaime or Jaime? In Finland, we uh, say Jaime, Jaime. Jaime in Spanish, right? Yeah. I, I love his work, and uh, <clears throat> I think that's how the album uh, had its uh, uh, where the idea came that Jaime had this long. I think it's thirty. Thir excuse me, thirty minutes uh, long yeah, right. so song that was quite difficult to play. I'm still a little <clears throat> unsatisfied with my drumming. We, I hope we will. Uh, release it again because it sold out very very quickly and i yeah. i want to release it again so i i might try to fix the drums we, we'll see but anyway I, I love the album too i think all the songs are great and and also the other groms uh, the songs and ariane valdivie she her singing is just un unbelievable so i uh, i really like that and i don't know if you noticed but uh with jaime uh a uh, little bit uh, around that th the same time it happened that Jaime had uh, participated also in those Colossus tribute albums and he had two fantastic tracks with uh, Rodrigo Godoy mm -hmm. and I, I just loved them but they had no drums and uh, oh, every time I listened to those albums I, I was wondering how it would sound with with the drums so after two or three years of thinking, I, I contacted Jaime and asked that would you would it be okay if I include those two songs in my Wayfarer album with drums and maybe some new guitars and a new bass and so on? And he said okay. So he sent me the old old files and I, I made a drum tracks and and uh, and I think Marco played bass and and Rafael Pasha. Uh, Pacha played some guitars and so so Jaime is in a very big role in my second solo album, Wayfarer. I was going to say first because there was a 20, 23 year gap be 
be between the albums, but I, I'm very happy how, how they turned out. The, the songs are just unbelievably good. I'm, I feel very honored that I, I was allowed to make a new version sort of it, and I think the world deserves to hear them. They, were, they should have had more uh, attention when, when they first came out in, in those. I think they were in Decameron boxes or maybe even earlier boxes. I can't yeah. remember where they were. But yeah, uh, Andres was telling me that that album, La Tierra, was in, in Latin America. And of course, in Chile, it's a lot in Argentina and other countries of America. You know, uh, they they go go fast. You know, and uh, so may, maybe you should remastering, re reissuing that, and then and you know, yes, put in I, the catalog. I Yes, it, it the the print was too too small. I I didn't know that because the first album with Bernard and Percy it, it didn't so sell that well. So I it was yeah. surprised that La Tierra sold very well. So it was one two weeks and it was sold out. So that was a mistake from my side. But you never know. You never know, right? So yeah, so that's that's why I'm I'm planning it. Uh, it. It deserves to be released because it's a great great album. And we were discussing with Marco if we should do it in English, but I, I said that uh, even though I'm sorry I don't speak Spanish, but I said that it, it sounds so wonderful that let's let's not change the 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 vocals. They are great. We, nobody can do them better in English. So let's absolutely. let's do it in Spanish, and that's it. Yeah. Right, absolutely. By the way, you mentioned uh, Annie. I forgot Annie Haslam before. I'm going to be interviewing her um, in a couple of weeks again. Oh, and, fantastic! Uh, yes, and, uh, I, she's she's a very nice lady. So, and, uh, yes, Renaissance. Everybody knows the band, and uh, there's a lot of great musicians all the world. So, I, uh, I, uh, people are getting old. So, I want to make sure that you know, um, I interview you know all this. All the all the people again because my motivation, um, like I, I, I always tell people, is, is no money. I'm no. I, I'm, I'm a computer scientist. And I I make a good living. Of, I teach as well. So I have nothing to admit. It's just so missing my passion. So in many ways, the radio and this podcast is for create like a musical archive for future generations. You know. Yes. Uh, if 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 the band the the the, the YouTube channel is becoming popular, eventually we'll start making money and a little bit of money, and I will be um, uh, uh, giving away all the money to a local charity. Where is one dollar or a million dollar or something between? I will do the I will donate all the money. I'm not doing not doing for me. I do it because I'm um, I love music. I have a passion for music, and to my dad. And uh, and I want to talk to you know everybody all the world, you know within time limits because I work for a living as well. But being from Peter Gabriel to Genesis, Pink Floyd, Pat Benatar, Dark Blonde, the Camel, Gong, whatever, all the people like yourself and uh, oh, not just progressive band but pop and jazz and rock and yes. to create a, a musical archive for hopefully the human species will be will last. <laughs> and then YouTube will be there as well, you know, in the hundred so people can watch the interviews, you know, and put them with put them with my accent. <laughs> yeah, but that's <clears throat> that's fantastic job that that you are doing, really. By just yeah. watch the interview with Don Serpentel, yeah, for example. Yeah. I've been lucky to work with him too. He was also in my yeah. second solo album, playing some great solos, and yeah. it was very interesting to hear about him joining Camel and but I didn't know the full history. I I bought the records yeah. already when when they came out, but I, I never knew the whole story. Yeah. So extremely right. to hear. Yeah, because my, my approach in the interviews I tried to do something uh different that I you know, let's say I'm very likely I'm going to be talking to Peter Gabriel when he's here in the United States in September for the for his tour and uh, I don't everybody know the hit, you know, about this and that album, the Genesis level. No, I want I want to talk to the person. I want to talk to the person, the musician. You know? yes. How difficult it was. Tell me about your life. You know, the struggle from one album to another. No, 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 the hits. And so I want to know the the human being behind the instrument or the band or the. You know, I'm going. For example, with the 
with Annie, I'm going to be asking her a lot of, you know, kind of personal questions. I tell her in advance, you know, I want to get to know you, Annie. You know, you know the people, yes. the side of you or the side of chemo that people don't know, right? So, you know, yes. make it more interesting for people. And, um, yeah, you end up re releasing a very good solo album lately called uh, Wayfarer or Past and Present. And, um, you know, feel free to elaborate on, on, on that one as well. <clears throat> yes, the, I, I told you that uh, the Samurai of Proc, uh, thanks to Marco, found uh, uh, excellent composers from many countries, like Oliviero Lagagnina from Latte Emile. Uh, we just released this Iron Man, Man with, uh, in the Iron Mask sorry, uh, album, and Octavio. Uh, uh, Stampalia from Argentina, Jaime Rosas, uh, Alessandro Di Benedetti, Marco Grieco, both from Italy, uh, many, many fantastic composers. So uh, in the first two Samurai albums, there were my songs, but uh, it just developed in that way that we, we have been fortunate to receive all these great songs from many composers and that's one reason why why the pace of releasing is so fast because it's not only one composer but i anyway regardless how bad they are or, or not i i enjoy also making my own music so i uh, uh, it, it just developed that way that uh, there has not been a, a question that my songs would be in the Samurai of, of Proc album, so I I decided that maybe it's better that I release them as my on my own, and and because I wanted to get a uh, little broader than only Prog uh, in the Wayfarer, uh, there are some elements of folk music and uh, and also some blues in the icy. Uh, Icy Rain, it's more, more like a blues than, than the prog, but uh, I, I don't care about the barriers. If, uh, if, if I feel I like to do this kind of song, I just do it. So I, I felt I have more freedom. And, and of course, uh, of course it's, it has been also more interesting to be able to play some keyboards and, and bass and even, even some uh, some guitar beside drums. It's very good way to learn. I I must uh, quote my mentor Tommy Liuhala. I it's it's it comes with uh, uh, it is the the self confidence that comes out of the total ignorance. <laughs> if you know when you know nothing, you you think that I'm good and, and I can do this. But of course, I I I know more. I I'm not totally ig ignorant, so I. I know by limits, so it's very good to stay, uh, stay in, in within those limits. But uh, when you stay there and you don't try to be, to play more than what you are able to, then it's very uh, re rewarding to to test your boundaries and play other instruments as as well. So that that's how the urge to to do these solo albums came and. And and I have been making songs. Uh, I'm very slow in composing, but I have been making songs in ever since I was fourteen or fifteen. And and even in Wayfarer, some of the songs were very old. Somehow it just happens that now it's the time to to finalize, to finish this song and release it. And and some of the songs were very new. And and with the uh, with the past and present, uh, it, there was only one year uh, gap between past and present and uh, and Wayfarer. Uh, there, I I had an idea. There were a few songs that that were released by different bands within the maybe last fifteen years that I was not very happy with. For example, there was a Jats waltz called Kati that I composed for my friend's wedding. It was a wedding waltz, but I I converted it into a judge waltz when Mist Season recorded it. But when I was mixing it, the, the whole uh, file uh, collapsed. It, uh, it broke down. Uh, so 
uh, and and uh, I guess I had no safety copy. So what I did, I had to pick it up from the pieces of of the files and and put it the drum files and put it together. And it was it was satisfactory, but I was not proud of it. So every time I heard that song, I was thinking I should do that again. And we didn't have a real flute. We had a, like a it's called like a VX. Five or VX7, some of those electronic wound feeds. So what I wanted to do, there were some other similar songs. For example, the title track "Past and Present." It was released in Janul of Strandberg's album, uh, made in Finland in 2012. And I was too uh, too much into it when I when I played the drums. There were two restless fills, and I. I felt uh, ashamed <laughs> every time I heard, so I, I decided that I must release it and, and do a little better job with drums. So some of the songs were old ones that, that were re re-recorded or, or otherwise uh, fixed, and, and quite a few songs were all, also quite just a very, very new ones. And, and Rafael Pasha, uh, if Raphael, you are listening, I'm sorry, I still don't know how to pronounce your name correctly. I guess you know, you know is it Pacha or Pasha? I, anyway, yeah. sorry, I didn't hear you. It, it's good enough, I think. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So he was uh, in in invaluable. Very, he he gave me fantastic help already in Wayfarer in in completing my soul songs and. Uh, introducing little new new things there um, and of course he played a lot of stuff there too so his part was even greater in in past and present so i in fact i i told to rafael that let's release this album as rafael pasha and kimmo persti because your part is so big you have completed to free my compositions and you have added fantastic parts and you play a lot so it's it's not fair but he said no way so it was Kimmo Persti but uh, I took care of that the next release was then by Raphael and me and and Perfect. also the, also we will release another one in a, one or two months our second album Sea of, of Mirrors Good, good for you. Good for you. Good for you. That was my last question. I'm quite sure we will do Kimo a part two in a couple <laughs> of weeks again because you know I, I'm quite sure the two of the two of us can talk for hours and hours and hours. And uh, feel free to mention your website where listeners and viewers on in Facebook and YouTube can buy your music. Men mention your 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 website where people can buy your music and so on. So, so. yes, uh, because of the. The COVID problems, we, we used to sell albums uh, from our own site, and it was working just well. But when the COVID happened, uh, 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 everything went wrong. We started losing shipments. Before that, if I said that we lost five shipments in 15 years, uh, there may wow. be... There may be uh, too little, too much, but after COVID, it it started to take like one month to send a CD from Finland to Southern Europe, and and uh, and CD started to disappear, and in Finland it's absolutely impossible to send uh, CDs with tracking codes. The price is so high that nobody would buy them. It it doubles doubles the price. So so we finally. It, it was hurting us, but we finally decided that it, it takes too much time and and we don't want to uh, make anybody feel bad that they don't uh, receive albums. So, of course, we sent them a new ones and, mm. and that's not very good business. So we decided to, to stop the stop our own site. So we are just we have a, a cooperation with one Finnish site who, who yeah. sells all our albums, but we also have very good collaboration with uh, American and European and Japanese companies. So we don't want to, uh, we don't want to uh, put too much favor to anybody. We are very happy to, to have these great companies who are selling our, our music worldwide. But in, in a secret site, uh, secret.com, uh, uh, there is a, 
a short explanation of the albums and and there are the links to the finnish site but there are also uh, uh, email addresses info uh, at uh, secrets.com and uh, secretsou.com so we are always happy to if if somebody is in japan or america and he wants to know where to buy them I, i'm always happy to give him information and a couple of years ago i also put my own website uh, put up my own website it's uh, it's kimmoporsti uh, .com it's of yeah. course it's outdated as most of our <laughs> most of these sites are but I, i'm trying to yeah. work on it <clears throat> soon uh, again but there is some history about me and some photos and and video links <clears throat> and of course marco bernard uh, by by checking his name marco has uh, released many of these videos some uh, most of them are like nine ten minutes uh, long with this ex excerpt so you can get a pretty good idea what what our music is like even those excerpts videos and there are some songs uh, as as uh, the whole song Perfect. And, yeah. and and i i have also uh, put lately put put uh, some some other videos uh, to youtube as well uh, but i th i think you can find them just by uh, checking with the band's name uh, Perfect. in yeah. uh, you too as well it was very very nice talking to you Kibo. i'm quite sure we'll do a part two in a couple of weeks and uh hopefully i will make it to your country one day i've never been there and uh i and uh we can have dinner a couple of beers or whatever because i wanna i wanna take well, some of, tell your wife some of the music that you have up, up there in your closet i will i will i will buy from you at, and and uh and you have a sign and get two copies one from uh three copies one for andres one for me and some for other friends we we change people, uh, some people from uh, Japan, some music. I send stuff to people in, in Latin America and so the world. It's, it's, I, you know, but the, it, it's good to change music. So definitely I want to buy several stuff that you have way up there in your closet. So tell, tell your wife that it's okay. <laughs> I will. You are very welcome to, to come to, come to Finland. Yes. Anytime. Thank you very much, Kibo. It was very nice talking to you. Have a great afternoon there, man. Thank you very much for this opportunity. You. you too. Thank no you. No problem. No, no problem. Bye bye.